to his state visit. Hey, how are you all doing? On the balcony of Buckingham Let me turn this bullshit off. Mad world. Wednesday the 12th. I thought it was uh, Tuesday, but it's Wednesday. So I'm just going to say hello and do a, just a quick random video. Um, yeah, people, thank you for being real with me. And yes, I have been rather honest. But actually, if you've been watching my videos, I've been doing this for, what, 10 years now, I guess? This is really who I am, you know. Look for the consistency, you'll see that it's just me. So, um, thanks for your support and understanding, you know, where I'm coming from, you know. One thing that really can be frustrating is to deal with people coming at you as though they know what you're about or what you're thinking or what's going on with you. And how can they possibly know they're not inside of me, they're not me, you know. Do you ever think about that when people come at you? Uh, most of us, when we are attacked, and notice how I talk about stuff like this a lot, it's really important to share this in these divisive times. A lot of times when we get attacked or when someone comes at us unpleasantly, a lot of times we just react or we just, without thinking, just kind of go into defense mode or kind of assume through our actions that they're right or we just personalize it without really and the thing is if you, if you stop and think about it which is the thing I've learned and I continue to do is to just stop and think about what is coming in from the person they're giving their perspective they're not inside of you so when they try to give you information about yourself it's an observation laced with their own perception, filter, agenda, or whatever. You know, good feedback is good feedback, whether it's positive or negative. But if it's, if it's real and it's helpful, that's one thing. But a lot of times people just, just mouth off, just say stuff, really not thinking. So that's why I share this stuff because it really it's um being in a social in a public social situation like I am a lot not just on here but dealing with a lot of people um I have to keep my ground you know what I'm saying don't you know So since uh my last video I have not really been playing a lot well I played some I've been doing stuff but I listened again to is don't panic this really is good. This really is good for you prog listeners, you folks who like music that keeps keeps moving and is the the the, the words are tied in to someone's life experience. It's it's valid. Is don't panic is really good. But I'll tell you what I've been listening to, and I don't have a lot of records to show because what I've been doing is watching videos. You know, the discussion of Roots music and stuff has come up because of the recent passing of Dr. John and me sharing what I wanted to share. And thank you for the feedback, folks. Um, a Roots music that I love, besides folk music, you know, is reggae. And I had a love-hate relationship with reggae for a long time. As a result, I missed opportunities to see Bob Marley because I, at the time back up until his death, I was kind of ignoring reggae, really foolishly, you know. Um, that is a music that, some people will say that all reggae sounds the same, really not true at all. There's quite a variety in the way the music is constructed as well as the different styles. As you may guess, my favorite part of reggae is conscious reggae, not dance hall. Um, I like that, but I like the message and I like the herb. I like um, reggae music that celebrates uh, ganja. So I recently, um, so this week I just uh, for some reason decided to try to catch up on artists because of course I have Bob Marley, I've got Black Uhuru, Burning Spear, Gladiators, Mighty Diamonds, um, 
And then I culture, and there's more. See, I kind of forget. I've got a bunch of their records. But some artists that I was not familiar with who um, I just got turned myself onto, I really like, are Hempress Sativa. I really like her. And Janine. Janine is the bomb. She's got this one track called um, Hardcore. I love the message, you know. You cannot claim a victory until your mind is pure and your heart. And, oh, what a cool sounding track. Um, there was more, you know, Ross Michael. I think I was blown away w watching these uh, some of these newer videos and saw my uh, music partner, Egypt, in one of the videos. Uh, she she goes she lives in Jamaica part time. She never told me she never told me about that. She's on tour now. I think she's in in um, Canada. She blows my mind. She's very enterprising you know next thing you know she's here there everywhere you know how does she do it amazing but i've really been enjoying reggae music uh primarily um the videos um i enjoy playing reggae music live quite a bit so that's a roots based music that still resonates with me deeply deeply I pulled this uh, randomly last night thinking, you know, I wasn't going to get into it, that I just have it because I was able to acquire it cheaply. I really enjoyed this. Jean Michael Jarre, The Best Of, The Essential, 1976-86. Uh, he has that uh, album, Oxygen. I do have it. Um, I always, this hit me when I bought it, it hit me uh, as the commercial side or the easily digestible side of electronic music you know coming out of crap where it kind of busting the door open but i was still happy about it um but i it turns out that this is actually even though it's somewhat cheesy it's really nice and there's a nice variety to these um tracks i was surprised that i liked it that it's it's good here's something i pulled that again this band is really cold almost always cold and it's very seldom when the music really st st hits me good but I keep the records the band is in the nursery you know about these guys Storm Horse is this particular one and this one is um, not to me one of the better ones but I was listening to it trying to get into it Someone mentioned the Red Crayola. Can I pull it right quick? Do I see it? Yeah, I only have one left. I used to have more Red Crayola albums. I kept the Parable of Arable Land. This is the one for me to have. Someone had mentioned it in regards to um, Per Uba that Mayo Thompson was involved with them. I love this album. I used to, I've had some other Red Crayola records and I, I never got into them, so I I sold them. Okay, I just wanted to say hello. Uh, my mind is kind of all over the place. What's really going on with me? My neck is kind of stiff and sore since my show. Waiting for it to just get itself together. I don't have another show until next weekend. I'm practicing for end of the month, the Hall of Fame ceremony where I play. I play a set and then I play with uh, Camille learning her tracks I'm still formulating my performance for the under the radar festival that's happening in July I think this is the 10th one it's the avant-garde music festival that happens in Omaha I've been a part of it every year but I always stress out every year because it's like I always think that I have to come up with something different for it which I don't I do it to myself but that's how I operate you know I'm just still figuring out what I'm going to do for that performance you know, I don't want to just do what I've been doing um, on my other performances. Anyway, heard from, I, I heard from you, Bob. Um, that'll be coming soon. I need to get some CDs now. I don't even have any blanks. Coming up. Anything else here, right quick? Anything else? That'll do it for now, folks. I hope you all are well. <laughs>